forward to seeing what you have in store for us this week on your do-it-yourself tips. This week here, what we want to do is kind of take a look at something that a lot of folks are looking for and we walk into the aisle to get us a ladder and it's just overwhelming with all the models, all the different kinds, the lengths, the heights, the types. We go from type 1A to type 1 to type 2 to type 3. They got uh, weight ratings on them and you see all that is a little bit overwhelming and you really don't know what to get. Why not have just one 8 foot ladder? One 10 foot ladder, one 12 foot ladder. Well, there's specific reasons and we want to go over that with you a little bit. But there, we do have a product that I wanted to get you to take a look at is these newer ones. If you remember the old step ladders for the house were really narrow and rickety. And so now we have these ones that's got wide steps and it used to say, don't step on the top step, not a step. Well, these are, they're heavy duty. You're able to go up and down them a lot more stable and a lot better for homeowners, folks, your average person five foot, six inches. Uh, this is gonna give you a reach of about seven foot. The way that we, you, you want to measure your ladder is what your maximum reach is, you're gonna be about a foot or two over that to what the ladder is. So when we're on a six foot ladder, we're gonna reach eight foot. When we're on an eight foot ladder, we're gonna reach 10. Now, as we go into the ladders, if you look here, what we have is we've got an aluminum and a fiberglass. If you see both of those, are the 250 pound type one heavy duty rating. That's just the choice of whether you want aluminum or fiberglass. Personally, I like fiberglass. If it ever touches anything electric, it's not gonna send electricity through. But then we have this one here, which is an A1 and the rating is 300 pounds. Now you may look at your step ladder and say, well, I weigh less than 250. But you gotta think, what are you gonna be carrying with you add that way to it? Say you're shingling your shed and you need to carry the shingles up on top of your shed, pitch them up there. What's the shingle weight plus your weight and you're stepping on this? We also have a, a full line of extension ladders. And one thing that they, they have is this is a, a ladder stabilizer and it goes across your top rungs to base over windows. It gives it a little wider span so that if you get on one side or the other, it don't slide as much. They also have I call them feet, they call them covers, goes over the end of it. So when you lean it on your house, if you've got siding instead of brick, it's not gonna scratch it up. So you be sure you pick these up whenever you get your ladder. That way you won't be scratching up your siding and uh, it'll make you a little more stable when you're doing your work. And one that we're gonna show you is this one right here in just a little bit. Uh, it's got the legs that adjust, as we see right here, if you're on a hill or on stairs, working inside, changing light bulbs, you just pull that leg up you get it stabilized, get your ladder level, and if you can see in the picture here that you can adjust any kind of grade that you have. So that's what you wanna look for when you're trying to get your ladder and know what you're looking for. This week, I wanna kinda of go over some insulating tips. Uh, best time, apparently, to do insulation is in the winter when it's a little bit cooler. It's a hot job, because whatever area you're working in is usually hot and stuffy, but for me, I find the best time for me to do something is when I have time to do it. So you may have to work this in at any time you're on vacation. Uh, insulation is really simple, kinda of easy rule of thumbs, and we'll show you a table, show you exactly what we have, but, uh, R13 is what we're gonna put in most two by four spaces. Two by six spaces would be like R19. And the R value is the thickness, the retention rate to hold your heat in or your air conditioning, whichever you're trying to accomplish. Now, one thing I want, want to get, make sure I get this into you. A lot of folks think that uh, in some of the blown in insulation that we can just keep blowing it in and getting it taller and taller. Not all of it's rated. You wanna make sure on your package that it'll say like R6 to R28. Those can be stacked up, but the others are gonna compress, and as it compresses, you're gonna lose your R factor. So if we take a R19, which is rated for a two by six, and we push it into a two by four wall, you've taken your R19 rating down lower because you've compressed all the insulating value. So we wanna make sure that we get this correct when we do this. You can get it in batch that's cut for a wall, or you can get a continuous roll, and the only thing you'll need you need a mask to keep the insulation from getting in your nose and in your lungs. Some eye protection, you wanna use your eye protection so the fiberglass don't get in your eyes. 
a simple utility knife to cut the links that you need. And again, you'll just roll it out, cut the links you need, just kind of let the friction of the insulation hold it in between the studs. And you also have this small all-purpose roll. You can put that around windows, doors, any holes that you have, wiring that may come out. And we're going to do you a segment on using the great stuff insulation for those places. This is just loose insulation that you can tuck in little holes. Uh, you can do that around your light fixtures, uh, your plugs in your house. Take your plug cover off, kind of put some insulation in there, keep that draft from coming back on you. So in this, this is a simplistic, way uh, I believe LG&E's last rating was that we lose 30 to 50 percent of our energy through open spaces within our house and we'll like I said we'll cover that on another one but you want to get your insulation in on your floor you want to get the insulation in on your ceiling and in your walls. I'm with Betty Irvin with Mies Tile and Marble. Betty how long have you been a designer here? Uh, 18 years tomorrow. So that says a lot about Mies Tile and Marble that you've been here so long. Yes, it's a family business and there's a lot to be said about family businesses. Well, so being here so long as a designer, you've seen a lot of things come and go. What's popular this year? Uh, one thing that's really popular are the Wood Looks porcelains. Uh, they look exactly like wood, um, but they perform better than wood. Uh, you don't have to worry about water. You don't have to worry about large dogs and their claws, which seem to scratch the wood, and they'll never fade. And one of the other popular items that you were telling me about is, is the ceramic. Yes, this arabesque design here uh, is very popular. It's showing up in natural stone. It's showing up in ceramic. Um, it seems to be what everybody's asking for. And so what would you pair this with? Uh, we could pair this with any of our granites. This could also be used as a border or an accent. It doesn't have to be the entire wall. And also, this is a multiple color thing, so you would normally just use one of these colors or mm -hmm. two of these colors. What type of, um, you offer many different types of granite in it. Yes, we do. We, are, we offer granite, marble, and quartz. Uh, one advantage that we have, if it is a stock item, you only pay for what you take home. You're not buying the large slabs like you do at most places. What else do you have for us here? Well, the whites are always going to be popular, the subways, the bevels, um, and just putting a little accent strip in them can just make an amazing difference. Uh, we also have some, uh, this is silver travertine and the ledger stones. Uh, these stack stones with the rough edge are extremely popular. Thank you so much for your time today, Betty. We really appreciate it. If you're interested in getting some stone or some tile for your bathroom or kitchen, be sure to give Mies Tile and Marble a call with the contact information on your screen.